As I recently detailed in my Ministry of Radio update, the main forum of the Ministry of Radio will contain one topic for each show released by NBS from here on out. The first post of each topic will have the given show embedded into the post, followed by a summary of what was said in the show. The summary will be broken down by the subject discussed, and the start of discussion on each subject will be marked with a timestamp. Shorter shows may be accompanied by a full transcript. This will provide a venue for citizens to discuss the show's topics and be a place where the Ministry of Radio can receive direct feedback. So this is a program called otranscribe.com in which given a YouTube URL, it will pull up the following page. This makes it really easy to either put down the entire transcript of a YouTube video or to create a summary like the one I'm going to demonstrate in this video. What makes this so convenient is that it's all on one tab, so you don't have to keep switching back and forth between your YouTube video and the word editor that you choose to be using. I decided to create this broadcast, uh, or this podcast rather, uh, in order to educate uh, members or staff members of the Ministry of Radio in how to do this type of summary. And this is just one example, and of course you can choose your own method when you're doing this, uh, but I wanted there to be at least some tutorial out there on how to create this sort of, uh, of, of topic. And, uh, and, and how to do the summary in a way that I think might make the most sense going forward. So let's just dive right into it. Uh, this is going to be a very long, very boring video, um, and I apologize for that, but hopefully it will give you the example that you need uh, to do your own summaries in the same way. At this point, uh, feel free to skip to either the end of this broadcast or to the final uh, to the final topic that I'll be creating to use as an example when you do it yourself. But the rest of this video will simply be me going through and listening to the Delegates Day broadcast and creating the summary to go along with it. This is a special episode of the Northern Broadcast Service in honor of Delegates Day. I've assembled a great team here of former and one current delegate of the North Pacific. I'm obviously Ghost or Palath, the Minister of Communications and three-time former delegate. And everybody else, who are you? I'm the current delegate of Fiji Grande, and I'll be sort of co-hosting with Ghost today. I'm Silly String. I'm a one-term former delegate. I'm also your king for a little while longer. All hail. I'm Delimbar, a.k.a. when I was delegate of uh, TNP Choding Cal, and I was your delegate from February 2007 to August 2007, and then for a blurry period of time in 2011. I am Iluvatar, also known as Zimnaya Svoboda, and I was delegate of the North Pacific from May to September 2008, and from May to November 2012, and from, let's see here, uh, I'm going to say June, <laughs> I forgot when one of them started, to, I guess, September 2015. May, I think. Really? I, I could have no, sworn. Right, right. Uh, Toom was elected and then stepped down, and then you won the special election, so it probably wasn't Exactly. Elected. Yeah. That's what I thought. Hence my guesswork, but there we go. Oh, how time flies when we're having fun. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> Elu, wasn't that the uh, first time the old system 
uh, prior to all of the reforms in our current constitution? Well, it's a little more complicated than that. <laughs> My first term as delegate was under the quote-unquote Monte Ozarka Constitution, the constitution adopted at the end of 2007. After my... Um, my 2012 <laughs> delegacy bridged the gap, so to speak, between the end of that constitution and the beginning of the current one. All right. And how did that bridge end? Do you recall? Do you mean, so the new constitution was adopted, and I felt great and happy, and then I was removed for an activity a couple months later. Yeah, I made a little, a little pun there. Um, I asked you if you recalled, and um, that's because there was a recall. A recall. Yeah, it was a joke. You didn't get it. Okay. This is a special episode of the Northern Broadcast Service in honor of Delegates Day. I've assembled a great team here of former and one current delegate of the North Pacific. I'm obviously Ghost, or Palath, the Minister of Communications and three-time former delegate. And everybody else, who are you? I'm the current delegate of Fiji Grande, and I'll be sort of co-hosting with Ghost today. I'm Silly String. I'm a one-term former delegate. I'm also your king for a little while longer. All hail. I'm Dylan Barr, a.k.a. when I was delegate of uh, TNP Choding Cal, and I was your delegate from February 2007 to August 2007, and then for a blurry period of time in 2011. I am Iluvatar, also known as Zimnaya Svoboda, and I was delegate of the North Pacific for... From May to September 2008, and from May to November 2012, and from blurry period of time in 2011. I am Iluvatar, also known as Zimnaya Svoboda, and I was delegate of the North Pacific from May to September 2008, and from May to November 2012, and from, let's see here, uh, I'm going to say June. <laughs> I forgot when one of them started, to, I guess, September 2015. May, I think. Really? I, I could have no, sworn... You're right, you're right. Uh, Toom was elected and then stepped down, and then you won the special election, so it probably wasn't... Exactly. Elected. Yeah. That's what I thought. Hence my guesswork, but there we go. Oh, how time flies when we're having fun. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> Elu, wasn't that a uh, first time the old system uh, prior to all of the reforms in our current constitution? Well, it's a little more complicated than that. <laughs> My first term as delegate was under the quote-unquote Monte Ozarka Constitution, the constitution adopted at the end of 2007. After my... Um, my 2000... Uh, Elu, wasn't that a uh, first time the old system uh, prior to all of the reforms in our current constitution? Well, it's a little more complicated than that. <laughs> My first term as delegate was under the quote-unquote Monte Ozarka constitution, the constitution adopted at the end of 2007. After my... Um, my 2012 <laughs> delegacy bridged the gap, so to speak, between the end of that constitution and the beginning of the current one. All right. And how did that bridge end? Do you recall? Do you mean, so the new constitution was adopted, 
and I felt great and happy, and then I was removed for an activity a couple months later. Yeah, I made a little a little pun there. Um, I asked you if you recalled, and um, that's because there was a recall. A recall. Yeah, it was. joke you didn't get it okay i have no sense of humor that's unfortunate you're not alone so i noticed just as, as a fun little aside here other than fiji it appears that all of us have a second name that we're known by that was not the same name that we used when we were delegate of uh, north pacific just thought i would remark on that the reason why I forced Jodine Cal in 2007 was because uh, that was still dubbed under the United Nations time. And I started in 2004, and the baby noob got Bar banned from the WA for accidentally multiing, or pardon me, UN for accidentally multiing. So uh, I had to use Jodine Cal in that period of time in which UN was. So that's why every time that I've been delegate to the North Pacific, I've gone by Jodine Cal there. I mean, the the real truth is that all of us go by other names because all of us are actually ADN plants from, like, <laughs> and we all got our other names somewhere other than p &D. Right. Some of us are money trees, and some of us are tulips. But we're all Pappas at heart. How about that? My original nation uh, was Gostopolis, and I was actually in my old home region, and I just moved my, my puppet to the North Pacific for a while, and before I knew it, you know, I just kind of never left. So it was more of a, that was what I was using there, so I just kind of went with it. That's how TMP gets you. Yeah, I mean, ASA, of course, for me is from Astario, which is my equalism nation. Some people will use the same name and have very similar nation names in different regions, but my policy has always been a completely different name, so in TNP I go by Silly String. Yeah, actually, Dolly, I want to go circle back real quick. That name, Chodian Call, what, where do you come up with that name, out of curiosity? So it, it's actually from the uh, Wheel of Time series. Mine was just a portmanteau of uh, Pallid and Wraith, just some ghostly terms I wanted to use. And kind of smash them together you're, to make a, a new word. You're you're trying to be edgy. Is that what I, is that what I'm hearing? And wraith. Just Being call, what, where do you come up with that name, out of curiosity? So it, it's actually from the uh, Wheel of Time series. Mine was just a portmanteau of uh, Pallid and Wraith. Just some ghostly terms I wanted to use. And kind of smash them together you're, to make a, a new word. You're, you're trying to be edgy, is that, what I, is that what I'm hearing? No, just having fun with words. It's more nerdy than edgy. Yes, Dolly, he's trying to be edgy. <laughs> so both of my nation names that I've been known by in TNP were come up with on the spot, confronted with the original name I wanted being taken. Zim has been a completely different name, so in TNP I go by Silly String. Yeah, actually, Dolly, I want to go circle back real quick. That name, Chodian Call, what, where do you come up with that name, out of curiosity? So it, it's actually from the uh, Wheel of Time series. Mine was just a portmanteau of uh, Pallid and Wraith. Just some... ...ghostly terms I wanted to use. And kind of smash them together you're... to make a, a new word. You're, you're trying to be edgy, is that what, I, is that what I'm hearing? No, just having fun with words. It's more nerdy than edgy. Yes, Dolly, he's trying to be edgy. <laughs> so both of my nation names that I've been known by in TNP were come up with on the spot, confronted with the original name I wanted being taken. Zimna Sovoda was what I came up with in 2004, the first time I created a nation when, to uh, my naive surprise, Russia was taken. And it means earthly freedom in Russian. And Eluvatar was what I made in 2006, 
because the random brief RP between friends that I was making it based on had it called had the nation called the Confederation of Ilu Iluvatar from Tolkien, and that name was also taken. Well, I always figured that name meant something, so that's cool to learn that. I know Fiji's got a story about his name too. What's yours? It's, it's quite boring in nature. That being. from Tolkien, and that name was Surprise, Russia was taken, and it means earthly freedom in Russian. And Eluvatar was what I made in 2006, because the random brief RP between friends that I was making it based on had it called, had the nation called the Confederation of Elu Iluvatar from Tolkien, and that name was also taken. Well, I always figured that name meant something, so that's cool to learn that. I know Fiji's got a story about his name, too. What's yours? It's, it's quite boring in nature. That being only that I wanted the acronym to be in alphabetical order. And on the day that I created the nation that I had, a friend of mine was operating a VPN through Fiji. And I was like, that's cool. Why not? It was on my mind. And I made it, not really knowing that you couldn't change your name later. And then once I got started, I sort of built up a reputation and decided to keep it and stick with it. So it's sort of haphazard in nature. It doesn't really mean anything in specific. And that is the best way to describe it. It's a good name, though. I mean, it's it suits me awesome. well, but it's not something that I expected. It lends itself well to parody names, which is really nice. Especially since I can't actually speak a word of Spanish, despite what the name might suggest. <laughs> 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 well, clearly, you speak uh, Fijian Spanish, so... Yeah, and Alanya on the uh, regional message board has been calling me the burrito for months, so I guess that would be my alternative nickname at this point. <laughs> so your uh, scandal, if you ever have one, will be Burrito Gate? Oh, yes. That's amazing. You need to go have a scandal right now. <laughs> All right. You still got some time. The election isn't for another few weeks. I not can make a great quick. burrito stink. I thought you said you didn't have a sense of humor. Well, I lied. I don't know. His programming <laughs> is a bit off, so he's allowed to have a, a slight sense of humor. I try not to. I try to keep myself all professional, but it doesn't last long. Oh, yeah, I know. You can get really weird. Tell, tell me about, about it. it. Yes, tell us about it. No, no, I, I didn't mean that <laughs> seriously. <laughs> so now we're the ones without a sense of humor? Yeah, don't get me started. So, uh, as as you all know, um, as part of the preparation for Delegates Day, I sent out a questionnaire, kind of going over, you know, the basic questions for what we want to kind of get a sense for the background of all the former delegates and their experience. So, I thought I would just kind of briefly go over that list right now and kind of, in real time, hear your thoughts on not only your responses, but on the responses of the others, especially the bunch of you who are kind of delegate around roughly the same time. I super didn't even look over this questionnaire, so I don't have any idea what's about to happen. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. I've got a beer, so I'm going to be fine. Perfect. Also, just give the audience a sense of what we're missing right now. Ren's here as well, but he's he's talking about cards in the in the text chat so you're missing out on possible card discussion i know you're very disappointed he's trying to get me to be interested in cards it's going to take a lot of effort hashtag cards are great the first question that i'd like to ask everybody is about how it all started your rise to the top your early days in the north pacific how you managed to convince the people back in the day to pick you as their leader and kind of roughly how the The first question that I'd like to ask everybody is about how it all started. Your rise to the top, your early days in the North Pacific, how you managed to convince the people back in the day to pick you as their leader, and 
kind of roughly how the, how you think that went. So uh, I think chronologically the the earliest delegate here, based on what I heard, was uh, Dolly. So. if uh, Dolly would like to start us off. Yeah, so my reign of terror, I mean, the delegacy <laughs> started uh, February 2007, but before then, um, I've been playing uh, Nation State since 2004, and primarily from 2004 to 2006-ish, I was involved in the uh, uh, Red Liberty Alliance, which was the uh, second largest defender organization in the game. And to be brief, after... I left that organization, I moved to Pacific, in which I started getting involved in the government. I was at one point, uh, Minister of Communications. And the thing that folks need to remember about time up until my delegacy was that the structured government was where the delegacy was a ceremonial position because there was a legitimate fear amongst North Pacificans over a powerful delegate as a result of the battles between UPS Rail and then Great Bite and subsequently Pixie Dance. So the North Pacific at that point was structured similarly but differently to what the South Pacific now, where you have a ceremonial delegate, you have a prime minister, and then you have a cabinet. And so for the most part, I was, as I said, minister of education, and then I became minister of uh, defense or foreign affairs, one of the two. And then in the November 2006 election, I tried to go for the delegacy, but lost by a long shot to Great Bite's mum. And then after that election, I ran against uh, Emperor Mathwis, who was her vice delegate. And that was... <laughs> Very fun. A bit, of, a bit of a dirty election, to put it mildly. So in order to convince North Pacificans that I should be their ceremonial delegate, as much as you know, I I will happily own up to the fact that I ran a relatively dirty. Camp. There had to be two rounds to uh, elect one of us. The first round, the only reason why he, Emperor Mathwis was not elected is because the abstention rate was too high, and at that point, abstentions were for the total. He should have won. He had more votes than me, but abstentions kept him, and his endorsement rate was really 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 close to where gbm was. a good friend of mine limitless events <laughs> who uh i i know asta knows uh quite well and she might tell this. so do i exactly yeah. would he message me when he uh, as i'm trying to figure out what to do for the next round and was like hey so your opponent he's looking pretty damn close uh, cooing. Hmm. And yes, yeah, it might be a good idea or possibly to send some people to uh, push him over the top. I kind of agree to that idea. Of course, this was not public at the time, but uh, suffice to say, it looks like that Emperor Math was trying to. The second round was basically called early because everyone in the region was certainly thinking that he was appearing because he actually did overtake his mum. So that is the very shaky start to my two turns in 2007. So just to be clear, you technically lost to a guy because of a technicality in the rules, and then yep. because he happened to be so close in endorsements to the legal delegate, uh, you just had people nudge him over and then say, hey, this guy's trying to take over, and then uh, discredit him and, and won the second round. Yep. And then later on, you went on to actually coup yourself. Yep. Okay. As did he, though. Emperor Mathewis also cooed. Yeah, that was October, and uh, that that's a... Uh... <laughs> yep, that's the, the best that... part of this whole story. <laughs> I think both of you were also in the North Pacific Intelligence Agency. Yeah. Yeah. Man, Fiji, we missed all the fun. <laughs> Those good old days. Terrible old days. So, Elu, I think you were the next one to become delegate, not yep. that long after Dolly, so how'd that work for you? Oh, it's a tale. It's a tale. 
So I first got involved in the North Pacific because my home region, the lexicon, was declaring war on it. And I, being a patriotic member of my region, decided to uh, do my utmost. And although the oath of, for participation in the region's military wasn't one I could conscious, conscientiously swear because I felt it contradicted the oath of legislation, the legislator oath, I decided to kind of freelance and try and do my part. So I resurrected my first nation from two years before, Zimnaya Svoboda, and brought it into the North Pacific to try and, you know, do what I could to try and take over the region or help somebody else and knock it over. Because, you know, we're at war with them. We have to stop them. But of course, because the founders of the lexicon tried to portray themselves as in the right and TNP as terrible and bad, I kind of, in buying into their narrative, tried to learn more. And, well, in time, I figured out that they were the jerks. And I was always crazy about democracy. So I kind of changed my parties around. And back when Dolly was delegate, I wanted him to coup because I thought the constitution we had at the time was awful and made it impossible to have a really good, in my view, democracy or anything like that. And so I wanted him to change the government unilaterally. But I didn't sell myself as a good supporter, I guess, did I? No. No, you didn't. I was too interested in democracy and not interested enough in uh, Dalai being the greatest best, I guess. Also, given the fact that you wouldn't necessarily tell me who you were, it didn't help you. Mm. Yeah, so I openly approached Dalai. I was open with Dalai as Iluvatar. But I did not tell them that I was Simna Svoboda. So, whoops. Anyway, after Dali and Emperor Mathuis and stuff, the Monte Ozarka Constitution was adopted to replace that old monster of a constitution in December 2007. And I was not around at this time. But in January, Westwind was elected delegate of the North Pacific uh, under the nation Lewis and Clark. His main nation, of course, being in equalism. Hi, Asta. Hi. And Westwind soon got pretty frustrated, or maybe he just wanted to coup. And so he cooed and created the so-called Crimson Order. And so when I got back into nation states, this Crimson Order was around, and I asked Limitless Events, so what's going on? And he told me that, well, there's this Crimson Order thing, but I don't like it because it's kept in power by Gatesville endorsements. I was like, okay. okay, yeah, that makes sense. That doesn't sound good. And so I started trying to help the legitimate government. And I tried so hard, and I was open with them that, yeah, that I, Luvatar, I'm also Zimna Svoboda. I was infiltrating you guys, sorry. Um, but I. And I, being a patriotic, really, really close to where GBM was. A good friend of mine, Limitless Events, <laughs> I kind of agreed to that idea. Of course, this was not public at the time, but uh, suffice to say, it looks like that Emperor Math was trying to 
The second round was basically called early because everyone in the region was certainly thinking that he was appearing because he actually did overtake his mom. So that is the very shaky start of my two turns in 2007. So just to be clear, you technically lost to a guy because of a technicality in the rules, and then yep. because he happened to be so close in endorsements to the legal delegate, uh, you just had people nudge him over and then say, hey, this guy's trying to take over, and then uh, discredit him and, and won the second round. Yep. And then later on you went on to actually coup yourself. Yep. Okay. As did he, though. Emperor Matthew was also cool. Yeah, that was October, and uh, that, that's a... <laughs> yeah, that's the best part of this whole story. <laughs> I think both of you were also in the North Pacific Intelligence Agency. Yeah. Yeah. Man, Fiji, we missed all the fun. <laughs> Those good old days. Terrible old days. So, Elu, I think you were the next one to be... days. So he tried to go for the delicacy but lost by a long shot. Logically the, the earliest delegate here based on what I heard was uh, Dolly. So if uh, Dolly would like to start us off. Yeah. So Hard, and I was open with them that yeah, that I Luvatar I'm also Zimna Svoboda. I was infiltrating you guys, sorry. Um, but I don't like this, I'm gonna do what I can. And got involved. And uh so when Lewis and Clark was overthrown, I uh ran for delegate and I had sold myself, I guess, to the old guard as a acceptable candidate and won in the second round of that election. Only one person actually got mad at me about having been two faced and Infiltrating and whatnot. It was remarkable. Who was the person? Mr. Snibbles. He was then Speaker of the Assembly. I swear oh you made God, that name him. up. Oh my he God. He didn't make him. it up. He was a real person. No, that's a legit name. Yeah. He was my defense minister, I think. Maybe. Wow. I, I want to ask real quickly. I have this choice now that you guys are talking about your elections, you had two rounds. Is that common that you guys have multiple rounds in these elections? No. No. Uh, especially before my period of time, um, most delegates have actual opposition in part due to the fact that they were ceremonial. So say, for example, Aristide, a.k.a. former English colony, was elected without genuine opposition. Great Bites mum, also Hepzibah, too. Plum and Gavia also got in, I think, pretty much just based off of the fact that that was pretty damn near a war hero, especially after the occupation. But, uh, and even since then, a lot of the time when an incumbent runs for re-election, nobody wants to run against them. Yeah. And in my second term, which was in May of 2007, I didn't have a challenger. It was only the February election that I was challenged. Hmm. So kind of coincidentally, you two had some of the more competitive elections in those early days, because it's definitely the case nowadays where we don't really have multi-round elections. And we've actually been doing single round elections, but they are actually a little more competitive, so it's just kind of interesting how that balanced out. Well, and I think it's fair to say that it's my fault for the current abstention rule. <laughs> Given the fact that, that it was... was Ivan. Uh, well, I, I'm not sure, but it certainly was abused uh, during my time in the seat. But briefly, back to Lewis and Clark, I can, given that I was involved in Crimson Order, can confirm that yes, it Okay, so I believe uh, if uh, Elu's got any more to his story, uh, so we didn't mean to go off on a tangent there, but I was just curious. I think I've covered my first rise to the top office. I can cover the other two if we want. Well, I mean, spirit of the question is kind of like your first time. I, I know you were delegate a couple Makes other sense. times, but maybe you can you can circle back because I think you and uh, Silly String kind of occupy the same time period. So maybe we can cover that with with her response. So Silly String, you were chronologically in this group the the next one who got.
this group the the next one who got to be delegate so how was your rise to that how'd that work out yeah well so <clears throat> strictly speaking the next would be ren but of course he's not talking um so we're Just gonna skip him pretend he never existed he's just gonna talk yes. about cards he's just gonna talk about cards um but i mean ren deserves credit he introduced the wadp and he's done a huge amount to improve it ever since then um i'm pretty sure he created the home affairs ministry he did he did a lot to revitalize internal tnp activity i think um and so he deserves credit for that but that's not about him let's talk about me um <laughs> Here, so here. I actually, I actually never intended to run for delegate. When I joined TNP, um, I had been a non citizen observer, I suppose is a good way to describe it for a long time. Um, I started playing nation states in 2004. Um, I was part of equalism and I was part of the ADN. participated in some of the liberation attempts in TNP to, to, to fight coups. So I, way, way back then, I started hanging out in the TNP IRC channel, and I had an account on the forum. I was the ambassador from Equalism for quite a while. So I kind of, like, I participated a bit in the community, but I wasn't a citizen. I didn't really ever intend to join, even. My preference was to stay in one region. But in 2012, 13, COE convinced me to join and be his deputy speaker because he was going to be going away and he needed someone who he trusted to handle the spreadsheets and do all the things. Um, so he convinced me to be a citizen, appoint me deputy speaker, and then I kind of got hooked. And so I, I never served a speaker, but I did serve on the court and Macedonia convinced me to run as his vice delegate. We actually... We did the very first ticketing run in at least under the modern constitution where we ran as a ticket but, but so i was vice delegate and honestly that was going to be it i i never intended to be delegate i'm the executive branch is not one of my strengths yet yeah, ren just commented that i kept blowing him off when he offered me cabinet jobs and that's absolutely true because the executive was not really wanted to be but the vice delegate I liked, I had plans to improve the Security Council and I was able to do some of those. But then there was some turmoil that in the next couple of terms. So basically, McGem ended up having to step down about a month into his term. This was in January. He had to step down in early February because he was very busy and, and couldn't do it. So I had to step in as, as acting delegate until we, you know, while we had a special election and Toom was elected. And then in the next regular election, Toom was elected again and had to step down a week later. I don't remember all the details. I'm sure Elu does, but he says he was blackmailed. He wouldn't file a GHR. There, there's no, we don't know one way or the other what really happened, but he stepped down. So I had to serve as, as acting delegate again. And then in the special election, that was Elu's, I believe that was Elu's most recent term as delegate. Yep. So he was elected and during his term, there was a an incident with Europea, our allies, that was not resolved by the end of the term. I think a combination of, of issues on both sides, which prolonged it. And I decided for the September election that I wanted to run in order to deal with that situation, basically. So I campaigned basically on my strength as my international relations and my ability to resolve it. I, I think I was pretty open in my in my campaign that I didn't, you know, I didn't have a ton of ideas for the NPA and I was happy to kind of do what people wanted there because to me the most important thing was was dealing with that. But 
but yeah, so I served, I served that term out, we resolved that situation and then I did not run again because there was nothing, there was nothing that I felt required my help, I suppose. But um, I think that's that's really the quick summary there. So you had two one-term delegates in a row then that year. Yes, I'm pretty much death for delegates. It yeah no it uh, it wasn't it was it was three kind of one-term delegates. Ren says three because um, oh, uh, McGann yeah. McGann served a partial term, but he'd been a delegate before. Toom served a term and was elected to a second one, but then stepped so ended up not serving a full second. And Elu was elected for a single term as well. And then I was a single term. So actually that, strictly speaking, that was kind of four one-term delegates in a row. You were kind of the person to go to in the uh, unfortunate emergency, it seemed at that period of time, that, you know, how we comment about like Todd and the person that is yeah, sort well, of that's true, there. Because I'd been in the executive since January at that point. Like I was the vice delegate, but I'd been acting delegate twice <laughs> in a row. <laughs> So, so I mean, it, it kind of makes sense, but um, I ran against I ran against Bootsy, I believe. I think that might have been Bootsy's first run for delegate. But I mean, again, I honestly hadn't been planning to run. It just kind of worked out that way. Yeah. So um, I think that makes you the last vice delegate to be the acting delegates, because since then I don't think that's happened again. You might be right. I, it doesn't, I I mean, it doesn't happen all that often historically. I just kind of got unlucky. Or lucky, depending on the point of view. <laughs> well, and that's how Roman got to be delegate, too. Because oh. his endorsement count was higher than mine when McEm stepped down, because I hadn't caught up yet. And so when McEm resigned, Roman took the delegacy for, like, three days. The while we, like, put out the call to allies to be like, please, please come in and help us get Roman not be the delegate. <laughs> I was about to say, do I now have to invite uh, Roman to the unofficial Cabal server? <laughs> no. no. I don't think he ever comes on, on, on Discord, really, so no. Use your own best judgment. Fair enough. I don't, I don't think anyway, it Ren, Ren just pointed out as well that I was actually the in-game delegate for most of Elu's room. So we, we definitely had issues with delegacy transfers. Um, I think they're a lot better now than they used to be. But, you know, it, like it took some time for me to get the delegates to make the advice delegacy from when I was with McGem. And then it took Elu, I think, some time to get the delegacy after he was elected. So, I mean, I was kind of mm -hmm. already really up there. Yep. It took me a little while. Um, I don't think I'd had a WA in the region until shortly before the election or something. Oh, that's right, because you, you didn't run in the regular election. You only ran because Toom just left. I did run in the regular election, I you think. You did? Okay. And lost to Toom. I have my spreadsheet out here, which is based off of data from uh, NX. I have Silly String going from 16th of May up until July 4th, and then that's when you, Elu, took back took over the delegate at that point yeah that makes sense up until like september 5th and you took back the seat for your official term uh as yeah now i mean just for comparison since since there's going to be listeners later um in 2017 when um we did the first um manumission day cultural event and got ghost into the delegacy for the first time the election concluded i mean early mid-may and Ghost took the delegacy on May 26th. So we have mm -hmm. done a lot since then to speed up that process. Well, it's a lot easier when the former delegate can leave the WA. <laughs> true. To be fair. Or, or if you... That's true. I couldn't resign because I was the vice delegate. So I couldn't, I couldn't just resign WA and let you in. And I had been Toom's Minister of Defense. And I had been actively involved in the NPA doing the main thing the NPA was doing, which was trying to free Lazarus then, around that. Yeah, you, you had other priorities at that point. Weren't necessarily intertarding, uh, you were not part of the security that, right? I was not. So, kind of hard to, especially with the size of the uh, WA population Pacific. Even at that point, it's certainly grown. So, uh, Silly String, you had your turn, and then you were like, okay, I'm done. And then we just moved on, huh? Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean... I've been playing this game long enough to know what my strengths and my weaknesses are, and I am not good at running an executive branch. I can I can take over a particular project, I can focus on something for a little while, but I just I just don't have the vision for 
however many ministries we have, like is it six ministries at this point, yep. in terms of creating priorities and managing people and getting getting things done and following up with them, I'm that's not my skill set. So I mean, I don't even I don't think I was that great of a delegate, except that I kept our alliance with Euro, so like that was a win. Well, the people of TMP seem to disagree since they chose you as their king in last year's delegate delirium event. That's true. Ren's still salty about that, so thanks for bringing that up. Um, I think that was that was kind of my bad because he should have won. I think he's the best delegate TMP's had ever. But I was the one who sent out the mass telegram, and I was me and Ren in the finals. And I think I think I honestly only won because people saw that I sent it, and so they voted for me because they recognized my name. I just want to put it out there that the only reason why I'm actually here is because I'm super salty about being lower than Grocery Schnauzer on that list. So, oh my yes. god, I'm so yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's the legit. <laughs> as soon as I saw the results for that, I'm like, no, no, you, you guys, really? You're going to choose him <laughs> over me? Well, I, Dolly, I think your difficulty is that your nation name. And so nobody who knows Dalimbar is going to re- necessarily going to know that it's Chody. Well, Cal. and also the fact that my my particular reign of terror or whatever you want to call it was way back in the day. Like I noticed that a bunch of folks who were earlier than myself didn't do so well in those uh, polls either. So, but no, I I, I totally get on that. But just below Grocious Schnauzer, oh my. <laughs> That's why we Dolly, need more uh, Elu. Um, because he's our historian. Elimination round one, it goes up tomorrow morning. So if you want to try to get yourself some votes, you have Oh, I, I, I better campaign then. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's ever tried to campaign this before. We had some issues last year with Quiet Dad um, stacking the, the vote to try to get Gladio in um, and just throwing in hundreds of puppets. Um, but nobody's actually ever tried to campaign. I I shouldn't because obviously I'm currently serving as a guardian in the West Pacific and I don't necessarily want to step into a what I consider to be a foreign um, activity but uh, especially with uh, how my my current boss will probably uh, slap me upside of the head if I do something to upset uh, our good at friends and allies over in the North Pacific, but who knows? I don't know. Maybe I'll have some fun with it. I don't know. That's what it's yeah, I mean, for fun. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's all fair game. Like, the, the, the poll is open to residents of TNP because I'm not going to make it WA only. The, the puppet stacking was annoying just in terms of the quantity yeah. of it. Like, everyone's always done, like, oh, I've got a couple puppets, I'll do it. But Quiet Dad did it to an extreme level. Um, That's I mean, overkill, like yeah. 100, I think. That was against but, I mean, me, too. if you want to campaign for yourself, it's not going to be a problem for me. Did he um, say anything about that afterwards? Quiet Dad? Yeah. No. He's quiet, so why would he say anything? Well, we 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 followed a complaint with the mods because he was he was we, we complained about puppet flooding basically because he was throwing a bunch of puppets in to try to rig the poll, and I never heard back on that. I think he did because confirm that the away. mods got mad at him, and they're like, "Knock it off." Well, okay. if it was b- back in the old, rooms, which goes asked, especially when you and I were debaters back in the day, like yes, they would certainly be able to respond to uh, puppet flooding activity. I. Don't think lately I've seen to that, but maybe that's because the West is a little bit quieter. Well, they started out, like, I got a message back saying, this is a feeder, so there can't be puppet flooding, to which I responded with a, with a message no. like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> that is BS. I'm sorry. We, we, especially, you know, using Operation Puppet Master in the day, they are well aware of what happened in PCR. They are well aware that puppet flooding does happen, and it has happened over the time. And I do recall the voice moderator being used in the GCRs, be it TNP or elsewhere, over such activity. So I'm I'm kind of yeah. 
Well, yeah. I mean, so part of the part of the response was like, because he was creating, he was creating a bunch of new nations, and they were like, you can't complain mm. someone is puppet flooding just for creating nations, and then so it was like, but okay, but he's creating them just to vote in this poll and moving right. them in from outside and just creating way too many puppets all at once. But apparently, he was told to knock it off, and Gladio oh. did not win. Um, says me, you are king. But I, I had a <laughs> defensive puppet flooding uh, benefit me because I was That's the guy right. that was. The only opponent in that part of the uh, that's event. right, that's right, that's right. Anyway, so anyone who is listening to this, vote Jonin Cal. <laughs> <laughs> By the time they listen to this, uh, the, the, your vote will have already happened. So no, damn it, foiled again by the ADN. Yeah, let's go with that. Uh, I want <laughs> to circle back. I'm gonna go off on a tangent real quick here. So you were talking about Operation Puppet Master. For the people who circle back, uh, uh, I want <laughs> to circle back. Uh, couldn't Habit. resign because I was the vice delegate, so I couldn't I couldn't just resign the UA and let you in. And I had been Toom's Minister of Defense, and I had been actively involved in the NPA doing the main thing the NPA was doing, which was trying to freelance our Yeah, you, you had other priorities at that point. You weren't necessarily uh, indoctrinating, you were not part of the security for that, right? I was not. So, kind of hard to, especially with the size of the uh, WA population in the Pacific. Even at that point, it's certainly grown. So, uh, so you had your turn, and then you were like, okay, I'm done, and then we just moved on, huh? Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, I've been playing this game long enough to know what my strengths and my weaknesses are, and I'm not good at running an executive branch. I can I can take over a particular project, I can focus on something for a little while, but I just I just don't have the vision for however many ministries we have, like is it six ministries at this point, yeah. in terms of creating priorities and managing people and getting getting things done and following up with them. I mean, that's not my skill set. So I mean, I don't even I don't think I was that great of a delegate, except that I kept our alliance with Euro, so like that was a win. Well, the people of TMP. to this, uh, the year vote will have already happened, so... No! Damn it! Foiled again! By the ADN! Yeah, let's go with that. Uh, I want <laughs> to circle back. I'm gonna go off on a tangent real quick here. So you were talking about Operation Puppet Master. For the people who don't know what that is, what is it? Asta, do you want to take this one, or do you want me to? Um, well, I can, I can give a brief summary. It was it, it, it was a very clever uh, tactic to try to recover the delegacy. So this this is the one this is the one with pre endorsements. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically, back then, you could there there was a way to manipulate the URL for for nation for the for a nation state's nation in order to allow you to endorse someone who was not in your region. Um, and this was called pre-endorsing because if they moved to your region or if you moved to their region, you would already be endorsing them. It wasn't um, just that. Back then, you could also endorse a nation that wasn't in the world in the UN, and you could right. and you could do it without being in the UN. Right. But anyway, and I don't, I don't recall if pre-endorsements went away at update. Elu, do you recall? They went away at update if the nation was in the UN. Right. So yeah. So right. so so basically, the the trick was um, having everyone pre-endorse the designated nation um, and having them update surf. Which, if anybody's not familiar with that, it means moving regions during update in order to avoid your nation updating. So you go, you start in a region that hasn't updated, and you move to one that has, and so your nation gets skipped. And so over a period of time, and this took a while i feel like it was at least a couple of weeks of, of surfing which essentially means... it happened more towards the great bite uh time like the actual puppet master it took yeah. a bit of time to actually 
done. Yeah. Yeah. And so it took some time, but it meant, it meant that, that, I mean, and back then there was only one update. There was no minor. It was just major update. Um, so you didn't have to be on twice a day, but you had to be on every day and not screw up. And, and they couldn't move into the North Pacific because um, they would get banned. So it was basically, it was basically gather as many fake endorsements as you can uh, for nations in TNP. And so I, I, I mean, I was not a major person in the ADN at that point. Um, I was I was a foot soldier, basically. So my, my job was to get puppets into the North Pacific, either through founding or moving and hiding them. And that's a whole other topic. And then pre-endorse and wait. And then when they got enough, you know, they would, they moved in and activated WA on everything and got the delegacy back. But it got so many complaints of hacking ruled legal because URL manipulation was not actually hacking, but it was, it was clever. It was the most questionable, clever. Yeah. the most questionable part of the 2004 Puppet Master, the attack that liberated the North Pacific from Great Bite was that um, Balatania, Free For All, uh, Ananke, and um, Crazy Girl, I think it was, logged in to all of the participating puppets to endorse the secret lead nations. Yeah, those three But they did that before the all of these puppets joined the UN. So right. they didn't UN multi, but they almost did. Yeah, and I think that there was a couple of other people that were involved in that, but definitely Free For All... Uh, Ananke, Crazy Girl were definitely the some of the main three, I would say, as part of the ADN effort uh, against Great Bite. The time period in which I, I joined while Great Bite was occupying. Funny enough, I had him involved in my, my but that's a different story. <laughs> well, Mamathistan, or New People, or whatever alias oh, he was under, right? Glorious comrade Mamathistan! Oh so his alias in Dalimbar's <laughs> delegacy was Upper uh, Kirby. Upper Kirby. The Upper Kirby, Kirby the personification of an acid trip. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, you guys were creative back then. He legitimately posted because he was my prime minister for my second term. My first term prime minister was Grotius Now. And my commiserations. Legitimately, <laughs> that man pushed me. Because of all the tit for tat little irritations, you know, micro. Oh my god, right? If it wasn't. I'm still for surprised him, he agreed to let you organize your team thing. Yes. And that took a lot of work. So, context here. Um, and Elu, you might have to help me with this one because. Sure. At some points in that period of time, it's still fuzzy. But essentially, um, as I mentioned before, I was a ceremonial, de a ceremonial delegate of the region. I was not really allowed to do anything unless I had cabinet approval. I joked, and I still joke, that I could not sneeze unless I had cabinet. I did not like that because, really, I was an ambitious young lad at the time, and still am. It's certain. Uh, so I wanted to empower the delegacy within the confines of the current of that current so i was looking to develop my own team and uh of course Rosha schnauzer as prime minister and most of the cabinet including uh uh buddy that we mentioned before <laughs> mr and, sniffles yeah i was hoping you wouldn't mention i was hoping to escape that name for another 12 years <laughs> <laughs> um would constantly accuse me of wanting to coup at that point Despite the election conduct, which was at that point still relatively un, I actually did not have, but it got to the point that every single opportunity that I had to chat with Grusha Schnauzer, it would end in a fight. Everything that I wanted would be, no, 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 you're not doing that, Dally. No, you're not doing this. No, 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 no. I got pissed off. Uh, eventually... As Elu mentioned, I started to develop my own team because just out of pure frustration over the fact that nothing was really <laughs> happening from my perspective. Now, that doesn't mean that you know, there, there was nothing happening in the region. But from my vantage as the quote-unquote ceremonial delegate, I wasn't happy with how things were going. Um, so I wanted to have my own team. And that was certainly an arm and a leg trying to get that developed. Ren contributed this gem. 
It was because you were not citing the residency clarification. <laughs> Oh my God, that ruling! Rose oh, to be fair, that was, ruling dates uh, to like 2009 or something. But still. yeah, that was after the fact. But uh, uh, that, that degree of pettiness, absolutely. Yeah. Dolly, did you know that Grossenhauser once pointedly speculated, and I'm I'm, I'm using that as an alternative to accuse because it wasn't quite an accusation in mm. public that Coe and I were the same person. Get out! Right? Really? Yes. Like, yeah, regardless of the fact that we'd both been playing since, like, 2004 and had well-established backstories. <laughs> like, I, I have known you for a long time. I have known CO, COE for a long time. I would be able to be like, no, person, and anyone who thinks that is a freaking moron. But, yeah. To be fair, he wasn't often on IRC. I'm pretty the sure it was time. during the time when I was COE's deputy speaker. And, I mean, Gross had a problem with COE, and so Gross had a problem with me because I was, you know, doing doing my job. Yeah. Oh, doing God. his bidding according to his perception. Gross is probably. Right. Hey, uh, was, anyway, wasn't... Uh... Nia Swoboda got involved in Dalimbar's teams. I do remember that much. And yes. tried to, you know, advance stuff. Well, you, you certainly... Yeah, you certainly were involved uh, to a certain degree. I just didn't necessarily trust you. Because of course not. Why would I? Uh, especially when you're keeping a huge amount of information from me. That being your actual main nation. <laughs> well, they're both my um, main nations. I, I know, but like your 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 dual identities at that point. Yes. Especially when the lexicon was a thing. Or whatever. Uh, whatever. It wasn't really a thing by the time you were delegate. Taijutu was founded still, I, January fourth, two thousand, and basically given, everyone left. The given the fact that it. I had fought in the RLA against those people, yes. and then took power as a result of sort of campaigning against them at the same time, given the yeah. activity that Lexicon was doing in two thousand six or so. Yep. Uh, yeah, the war I mentioned. <laughs> exactly. If you came to me and be like, oh, I'm a member of Lexicon, at that point, I probably would have punted you. I'm not sure what I would have done, given that you were pretty high up there <laughs> in my time, in my timeline, which I know it's getting a little bit confusing for, for listeners. Uh, it's getting confusing over... for me. <laughs> it was confusing to live for all of us, I assure you. Oh, God, it's. Yeah, I, I was confused too. Yeah, my path to the delegacy was uh, pretty straightforward in comparison to that. Oh yeah, that stuff you mentioned. Yeah, because um, I'm the next chronological after Silly String. That was May 2017. <laughs> it was confusing to live for all of us, I assure you. Oh God, it's. Yeah, I, I was confused too. Yeah, my pa path to the delegacy was uh, pretty straightforward in comparison to that. Oh yeah, that stuff you mentioned. Yeah, because um, I'm the next chronological after Silly String. That was. May 2017. So I showed up in TMP uh, right in time for the 2016 election uh, in September. And after two weeks of being a citizen, I was made the Minister of World Assembly Affairs, did that for a term. Then I ran for speaker because some people said, hey, you'd probably be a good speaker. And uh, Zyvette was retiring after like a year. And after an election where nobody bothered to run, and Zyvette's like, oh, I guess I'll do it, but I really don't want to do this again. So then when January came around, he's like, yep, said I wasn't doing it, not doing it. So then I stepped forward and by some miraculous fluke of my primary opponent uh, basically melting down and destroying his own campaign. Who was uh, that again? That was, uh, oh, when? what was his name? Kondratev, uh, the deputy speaker. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. I remember hearing about that. Yeah, yeah that, was, that, that was a real, that was a fun bad situation. That was a, a version of scandals that we had at the time was 
was that whole thing, which was like yeah. really stupid. But uh, he, well, he just wouldn't. You were, wouldn't, you were he wouldn't the first go. person to win the speakership since COE was speaker in 2013, who had not been trained as a deputy first. Yeah, that was uh, that might have been a little helpful, but. You know, I did have Zyvet as a deputy who basically reverse trained me as as the deputy. But yeah, that was um, I guess that was historic. So I did that for a term. I thought I did a pretty good job. Uh, but well, I, I want to express my congratulations right there for being able to hold on speakership. It's that in the Pacific. Oh, well. so anyone anyone who is actually being speaker is uh, a saint for dealing. With yeah, I guess I, I had a knack for like little mindless clerical tasks, so I didn't really think it was, you know, it was tedious, but I was okay with it. I was kind of used to it, and I like spreadsheets, so, uh, you know, that's one yeah, of Yeah, and by your things. day, the spreadsheets actually made sense and mostly worked, <laughs> thankfully. Yeah, that, that also was very helpful, uh, although you'd had to worry for that, that one column at the end, which if you, you know edited the wrong column at the end and the whole thing could like disappear or something it's like uh confusing that part but well it, it just sounds like real life government so you're you're not too far off yeah i guess you're so basically guess playing jenga with democracy <laughs> <laughs> yeah because you because you would hide the the you won't only have like the last three votes recorded and you would hide like the the oldest one and <clears throat> You had to do it in a certain order, or you'd screw up the sheet, and then somebody who was more experienced and, you know, was before you would have to come and fix it, because they knew how to fix it. So, that was one thing I couldn't do, but it was a fun time. We tried some things, made, you know, a staff of people there. I tried to make, like, a second layer of, uh, you know, underneath the deputies, but it was kind of hard, because unless you were a deputy, you really couldn't do anything official. So, the, we had the speaker staff, which was just people who basically... We're interested in maybe being a deputy someday, and you just kind of like talk to them and tried to give them little easy jobs. But it was really hard to find work for them to do. But I still think it was a great program because um, most of those staff members went on to become deputy speakers or speakers. So I think it was it was good to have it, even though it was really hard to, to manage it. You, and, you know uh, that I'm going to be uh, uh, asking you for tips and tricks on that because I'm speaker in the West right now, so I want your... Uh... Uh, thoughts about that okay. after the show. Yeah, okay. I'll put my speaker hat back on. So I haven't I haven't worn that one in a while, but I still I think I still got it. And uh, Ren was asking about the R A Digest. We brought the Digest back. That was one of the things I ran on was we were going to bring this thing back because Zyvet didn't have a deputy who was regularly working on it, and people were missing it. And I thought, well, that seems like an easy thing to do. Let's bring that back, and we did. And it, you know, has not lasted the test of time. But you know, at the time when I was speaker, we still had it. I know he he wants it back. Uh, you have to it's talk to way, our I mean, speaker about it, that. It really is not that hard to put together. You you don't have to do that much. You just you just go and see what things are, and you just write down what votes are open, and you know. Modern speakers, they don't like it for some reason. I, I don't know why. And yes, also to address this, one of Sawali's first jobs uh, was being deputy speaker. Uh, he was also deputy home affairs minister. I think he liked that job better. But he was one of my deputy speakers, and he was really good at it. And I still think he should go back. He never will. But uh, good help is very hard to find, and good speakers are even harder to find. So I still I would always endorse him for speaker in the future but i guess i was guilty of the same thing he was because i moved on to run for delegate after a term of being the speaker and by some miraculous fluke managed to win because my opponent basically uh melted down and destroyed his campaign although in his case it was more he That's got caught a pattern for you yes i have to you're say you're destroying you know, your opponents i'm destroyer of delegates just you know you're you have to be good enough that you're in contention, but then you need a little bit of uh, your opponent being really bad, and then oh, you can, you you can win. The... I ran against Tomb in his attempt to oh, make a comeback. Right. Wasn't there a bit of an issue? Server. Wasn't there a bit of an issue with that race as well? Or yeah, he, he yes. had a secret server that he had people on, and I don't remember why that was scandalous, but it was. That was the, so, scandal. The, the scandal was actually that he went and spread rumors in other regions about ghosts being like bad for them, 
and oh, then being right. TNP's allies and stuff like that. Yeah, supposedly I was yeah. going to flip the alliances on their head, and uh, all of our enemies were going to be our allies, and all of our allies were going to stop, you know, being our allies. Yeah, because that floated towards my way, and obviously if I was ally or enemy of Pacific at that time, that flips the and, point, uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> That was that was ultimately the the factor I think that was most convincing to people because simply repeating the fact that he was convicted in the court for violating his oath of office uh, was not enough for a lot of the supporters to think yeah maybe I won't support this guy. Well, that was like a year before he clearly learned his lesson, and it wasn't that big a deal anyway. Plus, all the new people he was really popular with them, and you know uh, he was a cool guy. I, I, you know, when I when he came back and I met him, I thought he was cool, and I thought it was really cool to run against him. So I was I was kind of geeking out back then, meeting all of the big players from the history of the game, and so many of them were in the North Pacific, and I just thought that was so cool. And they were talking to me, and yeah, I was like major fanboying at the time. So I was very disappointed when the election got kind of shady. Yeah. yeah, I think it was disappointing all around. Um, just nobody likes dealing with that. Mm. Like, even as an outside observer, when I started some of that, it's like, for me, have we not moved past my period of time? Are we still doing some of the tactics that I would have done? I, I, I was looking at that and being yeah. like, really? <laughs> well, and I really? mean... I, I recall his whole trial situation, and that was, it was a little bit of a complicated situation. Not everyone agreed he should have been convicted. Um, there's an argument that it was an accidental violation of, of someone's uh, Bill of Rights, um, rights um, and not an intentional one. Um, and so, like, you can come back from something like that. He, oh, he got yeah. off with a very mild uh, sentence, as I recall. But going on to try to smear someone in an election um, and making things up, and Ren says that, that there were doctored screenshots as well. Um, that, I don't think, is something that, like, that, that just erodes someone's respect for you. Exactly. And it's, it's telling that he's never come back. It was unnecessary, too, because, uh, to reiterate, he definitely would have won that election. Yeah, probably. Probably. I think you're a better delegate. I think you, you were and would have been than... You were a better delegate than he would have been. Yeah, but he would have won. Well, sure. If he hadn't hey. done the tricks, dirty tricks, you think? Absolutely. Did you see the results when, the, was, when the voting started? It was well. super close. It was He actually had a lead. It was a few votes. Plus, Maul was in that election, so he could have served as a spoiler. <laughs> he took just well, enough votes to you know risk their being the run off. I just want to state for the record that I always love and support a Maul effort to become delegate of... I will happily support his anarchy <laughs> and his coups and all sorts of nonsense that he will do. He is my oh, yeah. twin. I will always support him. <laughs> A risky proposition. And R3N uh, just said that Maul for TWP delegate. I will also support Maul for TWP delegate. I, yes, I will publicly endorse him. <laughs> wow, we're breaking some news here. The unfortunate part of our system in the West Pacific is that we have one man, one vote, and uh, the man is Halo, and he has the only vote. <laughs> so to, to go back to what, what Ghost was saying, I, I think he's probably right that Toom would have won because Toom was the Minister of Home Affairs, um, and so he had a lot of name recognition and uh, goodwill among relatively new members of the community, whereas you know they're not, they're not necessarily going to know the speaker as well. Um, but, um, I think he panicked because, Ghost, you had the support of certain people. Certain people. Ren supported you. I think that, I think that, uh, Toom didn't like that. Well, if, if you don't mind me asking, as a person who is more of an outsider these days, on current specific, uh, would you say that there is sort of a old guard in election? Who play a uh, on whether I would or not say more that they're great. Elected. Who are you asking? Have... I'm asking generally to any of you guys who are currently involved. So can you days on current specific? Uh, would you say that there is sort of a old guard in election who play a uh, on whether or not I would or say more that they're great. Elected? 
Who are you I would asking? Say more that we have. I'm asking generally to any of you guys who are currently involved. So can you can you say the question again? I didn't quite catch it. Um, is there a relatively old guard? So can you can you say the question again? I didn't quite catch it. Um, is there a relatively old guard who plays a significant factor in which a person may or may not be elected? I would I would say that there's definitely older players who have a say and and at least play a role and and try to get their voices heard. But I would say that I think it's shifting towards newer players and that most people overstate the role that. Older players, or the old guard, as you put it, uh, modern elections. What so, I wanted to say is that there's less of a old guard and more a bunch of gray eminences that sometimes bring some sort of insight to the table. Yeah. yeah. So it's so not my, like a central party, if you will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My my perspective is that there's kind of an old guard, but the old guard keeps moving. Like. When I was when I was delegate, the old guard was very different than it is now, um, and and I think it's it's mostly geared towards the most recent couple of years. Whoever's been delegate or vice delegate, if they if they come out and publicly endorse someone, I think that that will hold will hold some sway. Or if they privately campaign for someone, that will hold some sway. But if you haven't been delegate for a few years, like I don't think I don't think I could make a difference in who is elected with with like a public endorsement but like back for gladio's first term ren gave him a really 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 strong endorsement which i think probably made the difference um and that was much closer to ren's term he was still around then and so i i i, I mean i feel like tnp gets a lot of slack for having an old guard and i don't want to say it doesn't exist but i think it's not as stagnant as people sometimes think it is well that election is a good example of of turning that idea on its head because it was the fear of the old guard that I think caused Toom to reach out to them and try to spread that stuff. And if he hadn't done that, the old guard wouldn't have been enough to get me elected because all the new people, he'd been well, building that campaign for months ahead, you know, ahead of that election. Mm -hmm. He reached out to me and, and, and told me kind of similar things. He, he tried to convince me that you would make Raven your, your minister of foreign affairs. And so that therefore I shouldn't I shouldn't support you. He said Raven. Um, that's what that's was that? interesting. He he told you Raven because uh, he told other people that I was going to pick Prater. Yeah, no, I think he, I think he told me Raven. Um, yeah, irony because I I ended up picking Raven eventually. So just you know. I forget. I it's it's been a while. I'm not that good on the details. But regardless, like the fact that he sort of lied about it is what made me decide he was not fit to be delegate again. Whereas if he had at least been honest and been like, "Look, I just want your vote," things could have been different. He also told Ren he wasn't running, and Ren was telling me he's not going to run. And I was like, "Okay, we'll see about that." Yeah. And then it happened. And he had a private server for a while. For months. Yeah. So he was as prepared as you could be. And he definitely would have won. So but let that be the lesson. That's that probably one election where. Well, and that's the thing, you know, it, especially in the time period in which you guys are talking about, it, it's far, <clears throat> excuse me, far different from some of the masters that have gone on in my time. It, it's almost comical to hear of you know, secret channels and secret servers on trying to figure out, oh, who should be the best person specific fact that you guys are adamant that this is a democratic i'm not necessarily highly involved anymore and i'm not uh, I, i'm not a crap but i respect the uh, the fact that you guys are a democracy and that's what your institutional identity is so vote in wanting to be delegate of your region you have to play by the rules and that's a bit of a stretch for me to say given the fact that i've just missed in this show that i have not played by the rules but frankly don't play by my example. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do as I do. <laughs> well, I think it's, the standards are very different. And of course, you didn't get caught. Well, you know, there was certainly a lot of suspicion on the part of my cabinet on whether or not I was actively preparing for a coup attempt. Now, I had certainly done the election activity in, in the February election, but... 
at that point, I was not certain whether or not I would coup or not. I did not know. Um, it wasn't really until the uh, May election in which I had Upper Kirby, a.k.a. Mamalthistan, a.k.a. Great Bite, run as my prime minister against Evil Wolf. Evil Wolf was the other, one of the other candidates for prime minister at that point. And my mentality at that point was that uh, Evil Wolf was a raider. I did not know. And given that what had happened in the first term, I was moving on with the option for the coup. So I needed my primary advisor to be minister and able for him to not be seen as a threat to the establishment while we were getting the plan together, so... But... I still can't believe he wasn't seen as a threat. Well, because he was seen as an acid trip. That's the thing, that's the beauty of it, is that he <laughs> legitimately wasn't seen as a threat because he was seen as insane. <laughs> <laughs> so, I have a question here. Didn't Mookows with Guns, Emperor of the North Pacific, New uh... Pacific Order, order you to the region at some point? Okay, so, um, about... About Moo... About Moo. About my good Delicious. friend Moo. <clears throat> so, we, we certainly, especially during his time in which uh, he was a member of equalism. It's funny how equalism gets brought up here quite a bit. I, I deny everything. <laughs> so just blame and... everything on, um, 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 neither. What do you mean, come on. <laughs> yes, there we yeah, go. It, it, it it's the ADN's fault. Here. It legitimately is the ADN's fault that... Uh, all of these things happened, but uh, he was uh, emperor of the NPO after they had transitioned back from the People's Republic of the Pacific in 2006 as a result of them not happy influence. Uh, so Blackadder was emperor at that point, and then it went to Ivan and Mu. And during the time in which Mu Cows with Guns was emperor of the NPO, he was trying to solicit my favor to essentially be the next version of UPS Rail and Great Bite Pixie Dan, a senators of the NPO who had Pacific. Obviously, I was not granted a senatorship before then, and he was basically hoping that I would hoist the NPO flag over the North Pacific. I didn't, and I am proud that I did not. I am legitimately, especially given activities that I have done and the activities that they have done, I'm proud that I have done. Did um, he also order you to eject the mass Svoboda at some point? He may have thought he ordered me, but I did not <laughs> receive that as an order. I received that as a request from a person who was a madman. <laughs> because frankly, by the time that uh, I was in the seeds, I was concerned for the North Pacific, or really my own standing. I wasn't concerned about what the NPO through Moo was telling me. So, Gatesville was more of an ally for me, and I got freaking pissed off with them. <laughs> Gatesville, that's another ancient region that people today don't think about anymore. Yeah, yeah back in the 2007-2008 period, they s deployed their troops to support the delegate of the North Pacific against the government like five times or something? About there, yeah. Starting with myself, and then Amper Mathewis, and then Lewis and Clark, and then there was Shoeless Joe at one point, then who else? There was one more person. Did Gaysville support Shoeless Joe? Yeah. But it was oh, okay. quiet. I always remember Chulis Joe as like just some random temporary coup. Oh that no, didn't he he was a uh, much, member but... alongside the uh, Lexicon folks. But he actually um, sold out the Lexicon as it was. Yeah, when and he that's they where... the line. Yeah, and that's where it got a little bit confusing in that regard, because of course, now that I'm looking at my list again, it was me, and then. Great Bites, Mom, and then Amper Math Whist for like a couple of days, which, funny enough, was, yeah, but it was oh, okay. quiet. I always remember Chulis Joe as like just some random temporary coup. Oh, that no, didn't he, he was a uh, much, member but... alongside the uh, Lexicon folks. 
But he actually um, sold out the lexicon as it was yeah, when and he that's they where, crossed the line. Yeah, and that's where it got a little bit confusing in that regard. Because, of course, now that I'm looking at my list again, it was me, and then Great Bites Mom, and then Amper Math Wisp for like a couple of days, which, funny enough, was uh, handled by my good comrade, NK. And Great Bites Mom again, and then Lewis and Clark, which was uh, well, the order as we discussed, and it's Mum again, you, Elu. Mm hmm. And then Treysville. Oh, yeah. Sidia. I haven't heard his name in years. Having Sidia. Yeah. And then we get to Jow. <laughs> Durka, Durka Ranistan, the first time. Yep. That yeah, was Dirk, an was, awesome uh, Dirk was invited to this show as well, but. um time zones were even more of an issue so. yeah he, he's yeah but then it was nk after dirk, dirk or Jal, as i will always call him john ashcroft land because that's just how i know him but well, then his, we get... his avatar is and always be will be a, on the north pacific <laughs> forum a derpy dinosaur saying hi i'm Jal. And, and that's, I think, something that Aristide made, a.k.a. Um, former English former colony. Former English colony. Mm -hmm. He lost a bet, yes. Yes. <laughs> I have no idea what the bet was, but I will enforce it to the end of time. I cannot remember what that bet was, but it was a good bet, and I'm glad that TNP isn't it. But then, after NK in July 2010, Shoeless Joe happened. And that yeah. was like a brief period, and then Marion power. We had we had a lot of delegates. Oh my god! Yeah, like I'm I'm going through this list, and it's like okay, so NK, and then Shoeless Joe, and then Marion, and then Jal again, and then Fleming Gavia again, and then me again, and then Blackshear because I had the uh, 2011 time in which I was delegate with. Weird. I don't even know why I ran, besides the fact it was to spite uh, both Flem and Groschusnauser, who were... We had a three-way race between the three of us. I do not Fleming know Govia how... did not get over losing to you for a while. No, Both I know that. that. And neither of them got over losing to me for quite a while. <laughs> and... Uh... I still don't know how I won, and given the fact that I barely remember that particular delegacy, that is not one in which I did a hell of a lot, uh, besides, you know, arm stuff and maintaining some of the stuff that I had done when I was cooing, so haiku day, and uh, poetry on the r and and but, oh, that's right. That's when suppression first play. That's when you, as a delegate, start suppressing people. And I remember having last that. That's when we started to take control back of our regional message board. Suppression action. Um, the laws of the North Pacific at that point didn't account for that facet of game code. So, it was a bit of the Wild West, if you will, for, for me, because I was more than happy to play around with that. If you're not posting a haiku and you're a recruiter, I'm going to boot you. If you are not playing with the theme of the day, I will suppress you. And I have to say this, that a lot of the people who were recruiting at that point they quickly learned uh, that North Pacific, at that point, established what was acceptable to post on their region through suppression. Now, it wasn't used all that often compared to now, where as a guardian in the West Pacific, I will suppress anything that I deem as, you know, not worthy of being in the West. But at that point in time, in 2011, when I was delegate of the North Pacific again, I just try to have a chill sort of R&B where, you know, it wasn't too... I just wanted to have a community on that damn 
place. I didn't want to have. And it was a low a period. Game. Yeah, it was a low thing. period for the region and for the game. Exactly, it, it was definitely yeah. a quieter period of time. And so for me, as of uh, as of that point, my my job was just kind of to either coast or bring it up a little bit. And yeah, so I, I was trying to maintain the R and B like that through this new tool. So that was fun to play around. You and know, then the modern year... delegates had the same problem. We, you know, maintaining the R&B, it's been a challenge for the last few years. Trying to maintain the R and B like that through this new tool, so that was fun to play around. You and know, the modern year... delegates had the same problem. We, you know, maintaining the R and B, it's been a challenge for the last few years, and continues to be a challenge today. But you were saying about Blackshear? Oh, he he took over from me because I was uh, in the process of moving to another location, uh, so my term was short on that one. And he was my vice delegate, and honestly, Blackshear is a great person. Mm -hmm. And he was honestly one of the best people to uh, become delegate after, you know, me. And he had already done it previously. Many years before. Yeah, but he, he honestly is one of the most honorable people that I've, I've ever met. Okay, so... Um... I'm going to circle back to the original question because uh, we still have one more guy <laughs> who hasn't gone to tell his, his tale of how he rose to the delegacy. That would be Fiji, who is our current delegate. He honestly is one of the most vulnerable people that I've I've ever met. Okay, so um, I'm going to circle back to the original question because uh, we still have <laughs> one more guy who hasn't gone to tell his his tale of how he rose to the delegacy. That would be Fiji, who is our current delegate. That's correct. We got a little bit off on a tangent there, but that's no matter because I thought it was a very interesting conversation. So. I joined the North Pacific on July 17th, 2018, so like just about a year ago, actually, just over a year. And immediately after joining, I thrust myself into everything I could, you know, fierce endotarding, trying to apply for citizenship, which took like four full days or something, applying to serve in all the ministries, except I suppose for the NPA, because I've just always had a little less interest in defense. And then... You know, making sure that I was making a genuine effort to meet everybody and fully insert myself into regional affairs. So I got noticed in the Ministry of Communications, probably because I wrote a single article or something, not even a very good one, to be honest. But thankfully, that was enough. And before I knew it, I was Minister of Communications. And I took over the ministry from Brendog, and he had made sure that the Northern Lights was being published reliably each month, but I always felt that it had started to lack interesting content. And so in the next months, my whole game plan was to make changes to how the ministry operated and create new publications to meet the increased demand in the program and make the Northern Lights somewhat more of an ac academic journal than a real regional newspaper. And of that, I say I'm extremely proud of the work that I did as well as what I did to revive the Northern Broadcast Service. And right after that success in January through May, I was accepted as a member of the Security Council and then successfully campaigned for the delegacy. Yeah, Fiji, how was that election for the delegacy, by the way? Well, knowing the results of it, I'm not terribly surprised by the victory because I did think that I was going to beat Mad Jack in the end, but I would say that I, I am definitely disappointed 
in how things went. For those who don't know, Mad Jack didn't finish the election because of some controversial actions. This is what happens when you booze in nation state. Overall, I'd say that when it comes to the campaign, I was very glad to have the support of several previous delegates, starting with Ghost and Swale. And while I learned later that Swale and I actually disagree uh, much more than you might expect, I definitely see the wisdom in his point of view and appreciated his perspective that he added to things. And I think it made for a better campaign overall. Out of curiosity, what do you guys disagree about? Uh, just pick a topic. I'm sure we'll disagree on it. Foreign affairs? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, nothing comes to mind, like, right off the top of my head. But... Don't tempt me. Don't tempt me on picking topics. Come on now. <laughs> I guess the first thing is that I'm a bit more careful when it comes to Security Council and endorsement gathering in the region. But I've learned that through the delegacy transition that I went through, that it really takes a lot to gain the necessary endorsements to take the delegacy, and that just because someone has a lot doesn't mean they're actually really close. So, <laughs> you know, it, it might breed risky behavior, but ultimately I think I've, I've seen the wisdom in his perspective there. I think Fiji's tra transition was one of the longest ones that we've had. I'm willing to be corrected if that's wrong, but I just feel like that was the case. I think Wolf's almost certainly beat it. Yeah. My transition took about two weeks. It was slow, but I wouldn't say it was extremely slow. I started at 870 endorsements and needed to get to about 1,000. And it took about two weeks. And the conclusion was basically a really huge effort on like the last days of this one weekend to boost my endorsement count at the same time as unendorsing Ghost, which sort of flipped things. And then following the immediate ascension to the office uh, in-game, it then took an additional several weeks for me to crest at, I think it was 1,006 endorsements or something. But then ever since then, we've hit you know, a major summer lull, and we literally just have hundreds fewer WA nations in the region. And so my endorsement count has since slumped to, I think, 925, which is honestly somewhat embarrassing. Yeah, I, I noticed a graph recently comparing all of the GCRs, and obviously I took this in the West as a bit of a, oh my god, what is going on? But every one of us have been sliding over the past summer. Well, if you look at the, the historical data, there has always been a summer slump. Yeah. And I think this one is actually hitting us a little harder than it has in previous years. That's what I thought. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I, my fear is that we won't recover to the same levels that we were at in previous years. And so I think at this point there might actually be something to be a little concerned about. But it's I not kind of you. itself concerning yeah. that there is a I, the fact There's always is a that... summer slump. It always recovers. Nation State's been going on for since like 2003. And it's the fact be is okay. that I, I have to say the North Pacific probably the observer of here. You guys are a fortress. There is no one who will really be able to, even if it comes from inside. Like, I would not be able to coo the North Pacific the way that I... I think one of the biggest reasons why we have so many more nations is... I, I don't think that's an accident. I think it's almost directly a result of the many programs that we have that encourage people to become involved mm -hmm. and our regional mm -hmm. handbook and our WP which encourages endotardic. Well, and, and I think that and, together sort of forms the heart of why we're so popular. And, and you can see this being played out in certain other regions, the other GCRs as well. There are obviously other programs that, for example, the South Pacific Swan program, program I'm developing in the West Pacific, sort of similar. But there are a lot of good things come out of them due to the have on uh, maintained will and sovereign in addition to your tra traditions of region. So that's where the positives certainly come in play because you know what you guys want and you're willing to figure out, okay, what, what's the best way to get to that point? And this is what we... Now, it may take a little bit of back and forth and certainly there's a bit of legalese involved in 
which I roll my eyes at, certainly. I'm not going to apologize for that. But uh, at the end of the day, the North Pacific is a powerhouse, and we cannot deny that. Yep. I think it shows how spoiled we've become, too, because our transitions have been pretty quick and haven't been too uh, much of an, an issue. And we've had such high endorsements for so long that uh, for this recent one, which was only a couple of weeks, it's still, like they were saying uh, earlier, you know, Elu was delegate, but uh, Silly String was still you know, holding the in game delegacy. We've had much longer transitions in the past. And, you know, for us to have a little longer than you know, the recent trend, like, uh, Sawali had one update before he, mm-hmm. he took over the delegacy. So obviously we we're doing better at that these days. So when things start to be a little less than the really high standard that we've come to expect, we start maybe getting a little, a little worried about maybe the sky starting to fall, but you know, we're still really solid compared to where we used to be. Oh yeah. So I just looked it up and Blue Wolf was elected delegate on January 19th, 2012 and became WA delegate on March 23rd, 2012. So, so that's, that's, a, that's a while. That's two a months time. versus two weeks. And mine Same time as unendorsing Ghost, which sort of flipped things. And then following the immediate to the campaign, I was very glad to have the support of several previous delegates, starting with Ghost and Suwale. And while I learned later that Suwale and I actually disagree uh, much more than you might expect, I definitely see the wisdom in his point of view and appreciate his perspective that he added to things. And I think it made for a better campaign overall. Out of curiosity, what do you guys disagree about? Uh, just pick a topic. I'm sure we'll disagree on it. Foreign affairs? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, nothing comes to mind, like, right off the top of my head. But don't tempt me, don't tempt me on picking topics. Come on now. <laughs> I guess the first thing is that I'm a bit more careful when it comes to security council and endorsement gathering in the region. But I've learned that through the delegacy transition that I went through, that it really takes a lot to gain the necessary endorsements to take the delegacy. And that just because someone has a lot doesn't mean they're actually really close. So, <laughs> you know, it, it might breed risky behavior, but ultimately I think I've, I've seen the wisdom in his perspective there. I think Fiji's tra- We've come to expect we start maybe getting a little a little worried about maybe the sky starting to fall but you know we're still really solid compared to where we used to be oh yeah so i just looked it up and blue wolf was elected delegate on january 19th 2012 and became wa delegate on march 23rd 2012. so, so that's, that, uh, that's a while that's two a months while. versus two weeks and mine would have been faster the first time but we were running that little event so that's why plumby has the record for most days served as delegate. delegate game side because we <laughs> deliberately gave him two extra weeks to Sorry. wait for the 26th okay so um while while we have this awkward silence which uh, will be edited in post i'm sure um we've been talking for a while guys and that was the first question so you can see why i wasn't planning on getting through that entire questionnaire 
Although, a yeah, lot that of was answers, a lot of questions in there. Yeah, you actually answered a lot of the subsequent questions during that conversation, so I don't really need to go too far into the list here. But I do have a couple of these will help. be much faster questions we kind of rapid fire this set i don't know when you guys want to you know skedaddle but you know we have been talking for probably over an hour and a half now um let's see so uh i'm gonna ask like some rapid fire type questions here if you guys looking back on all the terms questions here if you You guys, looking back on all the terms, because some of us have served more than two terms, you know, we've been elected, you know, years apart in some cases. What would you consider to be your greatest achievement as? Delegate and your greatest failure as delegate. And we'll go chronological again, so we'll start with Dolly. Well, it, these actually tie in together. The greatest achievement regret is the coup that I took. Took June of 2007. The fact was that for many of us, post-influence environment, not think that a event like that or it was certainly not going to last long um my coup which admittedly was also a regret because i wasn't really able to do a hell of a lot with it it lasted for about two months uh from about june to august of 2007 and the reason why i stopped it primarily was not even the endorsement against me but i was ready to head off to university that year and so i was getting prepared to so it was a a mutually reasonable thing to give up the delegate to great pipes to have amnesty but for the region to recognize that the delegates to have more power i strong that a especially it's primary dolly we're definitely not picking up what you're saying now so you oh. might want to oh, are answer you... that last part again maybe closer to the mic or something. Are you able to hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Game mechanics are primary, and that the delegate being the primary role in a region, in a GCR at least, is a fundamentally good thing. And this is where, honestly, I, you know, I could toot my... I don't necessarily like to toot my horn, but I do fundamentally believe that my coup in 2007 brought upon a stronger region in specific by having a stronger delegacy. It took work. It took both mine and the Crimson Order and Shoeless Joe and Emperor Mathewis. It took two, basically two years for the region to finally recognize that, yes, you do need to have a strong executive delegacy to maintain the region. But I strongly believe to have that in in this game in the gcrs whether or not you know anything underpinning that is democratic i don't care but ultimately my goal as a coup in 2007 was to increase the power of delegate so i got that done. that that's your legacy then yes okay because that was it another took, question it, so i guess we'll wrap that into it too my you know i, I i've done a, a lot in this game and i fought against you know, many of even the people that who are on this panel right now. And I strongly believe, you know, my, my time in Osiris was a completely different facet that was trying to birth a region, but my time in the North Pacific was trying to strengthen. Whether you agree with me on the way that I did it or not, I don't imagine the North Pacific as strong as it would be 
if the delegacy of the North Pacific was as broken and ceremonial as it was during my time. And I would never want to see GCR being run the same lines as it was at that point. Oh, certainly. <laughs> okay, that I, I, I can see where you're coming from there. Um, although, you know, methods, probably we would have preferred slightly different methods, uh, some of us, but... But, but yeah. when you have people like Elu thinking the same thing at that period of time, then uh, there's a lot of commentary going on at that point. It's, it's, hard, it's hard for me to put myself into that mindset because I don't know what it was like. I only know what it's like now, and it would just be unthinkable to support a coup today, but, you know... I didn't have this North Pacific that we have today. Uh, you know, back then you you didn't have it, so I I really can't relate, I guess. But oh, um, we're going to skip the chronological thing slightly, so we can have <laughs> we can have Silly String uh, answer these questions before she has to take off. So, uh, Silly String. Pacific that we have today. Uh, you know, back then you you didn't have it, so I I really can't relate i guess but oh um we're going I'm going to skip the chronological thing slightly so we can have <laughs> we can have silly string uh answer these questions before she has to take off so uh silly string uh if you want to Tell us your greatest achievement, greatest failure, and I guess also what you think your legacy is as delegate. Yeah, so... so... I feel like I'm going to give a different kind of answer than most people, but, I mean, to go back to the fact that I never wanted to be delegate, I don't consider my delegacy to be my pinnacle... of service to TNP. I, I had a goal as delegate and it was to deal with the um with the uh <laughs> the, the Euro situation. Sorry, I was laughing at the chat. Um to deal with the Euro situation. And I did that. And so that's that's what I consider to be my achievement. And I mean, in, in terms of failure, maybe that I wasn't a better delegate overall. I, I mean, I didn't have a, a great goal for the delegacy beyond that. Um, and so I kind of, I kind of kept things running, but I don't think I did a great job um, expanding things. But overall, I, I see my legacy in TNP as not, not being what I did as delegate. Um, I see my legacy in the courts and in our legal documents and that's that's where i prefer to point for what i've accomplished okay that's that's fair i i think that's a perfectly acceptable answer and it doesn't just have to be what you accomplished as delegate but i guess you know you probably embodied some of those things when you were even when you were in office we all kind of have areas of focus and uh when we when the questionnaires are published you, you'll see that you know all the delegates are kind of highlight the things they thought were their strengths and their favorite parts of not just the job of the executive, but maybe even just in general. But legacy wise, yeah, I would agree with what you said. I definitely felt your influence on all of these legal documents and your advice even today on the current legal questions is very useful. And you're definitely a go-to person for that. So I would agree. So I'm going to go to bed. Um, yep. Have a good rest of your chat. Elu, greatest achievement, greatest failure, legacy. Your chat. Elu.
Greatest achievement, greatest failure, legacy? Sure. Um, back in 2008, my goal really was to turn the North Pacific from a playing field into a player. And I feel like I accomplished that to the extent it was mm -hmm. possible at the time. Um, instead of being the region people were invading and infiltrating and all of that all the time. I mean, people were still infiltrating us, but instead of that, we ended up being a participant in what was happening in the East Pacific, um, uh, the, the empire, quote unquote. Yeah. And we even successfully prosecuted offensive operations against Gatesville, which was not expected to be a thing we could do. Uh, they had some uh, side region they were using for some random thing, and we invaded it after we were back at war with them again. That was uh, very fun. Yeah, I would and say that for my... your, your delicacy definitely was a step in the right direction from conflict that had happened in 2007 and 2000. Yeah, that was my hope. Um, and for that first term, my greatest failure might be stepping aside, honestly. I think... Um, Cisco Treville was an experienced leader uh, who had been around in the Pacific before and in the game. And I thought that it would be great to step back and let him put, take the wheel. But in retrospect, maybe I should have sustained my efforts and tried to steer the, the region further the direction I wanted. No idea. That's purely hypothetical. For my second time at it, my goal was to kind of revive the region, um, rewrite all the document legal documents to something a little easier and and this was also dovetailing with efforts i'd pulled other people into with the progressive party at the time and uh, efforts i was trying to do as well as admin reorganize the forum make it easier to understand to look at such stuff like that and i think in that sense my great success was the new then revamped legal code, which we've tweaked many times since then but we've kept that codification and helping gulliver one of the better friends I have in this game and otherwise uh, get a new constitution for us, which we've kept since then. And again, tweaked many times. And for my third time at it, greatest achievement, I'm not sure. Like it was a whole bunch of reacting to stuff. And I think my greatest regret would have been that problem with Europea that Esta, Esta or uh, Silly String ended up having to solve. Yeah. In terms of my legacy, I think today my legacy would probably be that codified law and um, other aspects of the region, the way I kind of pushed them to be. Before my 2012 term, we kept having each delegate kind of build up the executive from scratch. And I think since 2012, we've kind of had the same general framework, although it's changed a lot. Okay. Um, Didn't want to interrupt you. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I was just terrified that I'd stop being audible because everyone was quiet and I decided that meant they didn't hear me. No, no, no. Uh, that's fine. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm relatively new. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm relatively new delegate in terms of the history, so I feel like, uh, a lot of looking back on my time, maybe it will change. But I could say that, at least from my perspective, um, I was very proud of the work we did in culture. I thought that of all the things I thought would be kind of the big achievements of my time as delegate, our, our cultural events. Um, very proud of the WA Symposium. It went just about as well as I could have expected and beyond what I expected, at least the first weekend. I didn't think there'd be two weekends, but, you know, we, we tried. <laughs> the first weekend was definitely the best one, though. Had a great broadcast for NBS, uh, and that was a highlight for me. That was my, my third term, I guess, in the, the first part, my, my first two delegacies. I really like what we were able to accomplish with End Day and Uppercut and how it helped us get closer to the MPO and thaw things out. Of course, you know, subsequent events, that didn't really last. Same with Osiris and the MPA. So I guess uh, uh, I said MP, I meant NAP, <laughs> not Aggression Pact, because <laughs> mm. uh, that was, you know, the only only complete treaty I had for a while was that one and obviously everything changed going into 2018 so 
that also dovetails into my, what I consider my greatest regret or failure was that I had this optimistic vision of foreign policy and diplomacy, and uh, it was tested, and uh, we didn't really succeed in kind of reaching the potential that I had hoped that we could. It's an ongoing effort in trying to get us more involved in gameplay and put ourselves out there more. It's a constant challenge, and you know I haven't really been able to figure out what that course looks like, but. I always had the big, you know, the big vision for it, and that was, you know, I was always striving for that, never quite felt that I reached it, so that was kind of where I was disappointed. Legacy, I'm, I'm not going to be super arrogant here and assume I've, I've got a legacy when I was just delegate a year ago, but I hope that, that that same push I'm doing in foreign policy can be my legacy and that we can be less of a kind of an island fortress. You know, Dolly said we're a fortress. I think sometimes when we take that a little too literally and we kind of look in, look inside into ourselves and less about engaging with the outside world. So I hope if, if we succeed there that my time in office will have been part of what pushed us there. And um, all the WA stuff has always been you know near and dear to my heart. Hopefully the, the work we did in the WA will, all the little pieces along the way will have formed a much better system and I think it's improved since you know after my delegacy and the delegates have come after have expanded and built on it so I hope that what we did when I was delegate helped them to do that but that's more or less what I'm thinking for me so uh, how about you Fiji yeah so I think closer to the MPO and thaw things out, of course, you know, subsequent events ended up having to solve. Yeah. In terms of my legacy, I think today my legacy would probably be that codified law and um, other aspects of the region, the way I kind of pushed them to be. Before my 2012 term, we kept having each delegate kind of build up the executive from scratch. And I think since 2012, we've kind of had the same general framework, although it's changed a lot. Okay. Um, didn't want to interrupt you. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was just terrified that I'd stop being audible because everyone was quiet and I decided that meant they didn't hear me. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, that's fine. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm relatively new. system and I think it's improved since you know after my delegacy and the delegates have come after have expanded and built on it so I hope that what we did when I was delegate helped them to do that but that's more or less what I'm thinking for me so uh, how about you Fiji yeah so I think I think the biggest achievement that I had during this term would probably have been cultural related on the success that we had a little earlier in the term from the RP themed NBS shows that we did. There was a whole slew of them and I'm actually in fact still editing some. And I think that to some extent it's caused a little bit of reconnection and perhaps popularity of the TNP government with our role play community. And then secondly, I'd actually also add that I think government transparency has been a real success of this term that we've met all of the freedom of information requests that we've received and that we've improved visibility of you know the actions that we've been taking through monthly minister reports and whatnot and i think that that sort of greater presence helps the image that we have as an administration what i would consider my greatest failure would unfortunately also be cultural we've made a lot of progress towards getting a number of the festivals that I had planned in my campaign to happen. But what we really failed on was focusing on one at a time and 
making sure that we did our best on each one and completing them, sort of checking them off the list, the mistake of trying to do too many things at once. And we were working on the Leonard's and the Security Council Week or Endorsement Frenzy and the, the Comms Festival and the uh, Greater Dean said role play sort of all at the same time, and that didn't help anything. So while we got to like 80% on each of those, and it'll be great for the next delegate going forward, we just didn't make it to the finish line uh, on on really any of them. And at this point, I mean, there's a certain logic to it where the endorsement frenzy or SC week, because it's so very late in the term now, makes sense for the next delegate or the delegate for the next election going forward to have. Uh, the Lennarts sort of makes more sense at the end of a given count year rather than being held in the middle. And the comms festival that I had planned would make sense if paired with another event like the Greater Teenstad role play festival that we we had and, and sort of go off of the success of those RP themed NBS shows perhaps. And so ultimately when it comes to my legacy, I fear that I'll be viewed as someone who's overpromised and underdelivered, given what happened to those festivals, but also that I'll be seen as someone who participated a lot in those VCs, who cared about each of our regional communities, who remained flexible in difficult times, and that ultimately, like Asta, like Silly String, I think I'll be remembered more for my time as Minister of Communications than I will for my term as delegate. Hmm. It's sort of a hard truth to swallow, but I think I think I'm sort of happy with the term that I've had as as Minister of Communications more than I am with my term as as delegate. And uh, for me, it's been a lot due to timing. Last month or so has been really hard on more real life events, job interviews, and so on. So I'm being you know forced to spend uh, less and less time on nation states, and I think that sort of impacted my ability to fulfill the role as delegate. And it actually sort of goes into a bit of of my leadership style. I think I am probably happier with my last term as Minister of Defense than I am with my subsequent term as delegate as well. I felt that I just got better as time went on, so I think my third one was my best time as delegate as well. I just, you know... You have more practice at it, but the timing is also important because you know you have to deal with what's going on at the time that you're in office, and sometimes also you know the personal life stuff, like what Fiji was saying. Your ministries or even yourself, sometimes you just aren't able to be everywhere and do everything that you want to do during that time that you have the job. So it's just kind of like the look of the draw. I think to go into Another one of the questions that you asked, which was a personal. Another one of the questions that. The luck of the draw. I think to go into another one of the questions that you asked, which was a personal leadership philosophy, which I sort of touched on a bit uh, in my last point, is that, as you said, you know, you can't be everywhere at once. There's only so much that a delegate can do. And so you have to be able to work with your ministers and support them, but they ultimately have to have uh, some degree of independence. And that on top of that, you should accept and encourage criticism, remain respectful, admit your mistakes, ask for help if you know you need it, but stay involved where you can with all the projects that are happening as best as you can, but acknowledge that sometimes that's not going to work out and sort of just, you know, be forgiving of, of, you know, your ministers. And if they end up making mistakes, take the blame on yourself, because I think they work so hard for our region that they serve at your pleasure. And I think there's a certain amount of responsibility that should fall on the delegate at the end of the day. The buck well, stops the buck. with you. Yeah. I was just about to say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, I'm and, the American and, here. Well, too bad.
I, I was just about to say that, it, especially, you know what, um, especially with Discord these days, it is not that difficult to have a week hour cabinet meeting on voice chat. I'm not sure what you guys have been doing North regular catch up. What's what's happening cabinet? That is the best way you elegant know what is uh, going on with your region to figure out okay so what are you doing in your role what are you doing in your role how can i help you it's a give and take situation but ultimately the delegate is the boss and regardless how you feel about that that's just the way that gaming games are so what i what i want to say in closing is that i i'm quite happy to see that north pacific does have a stronger delegacy and a stronger government these days and that you're able to be able to have different values point. It's not necessarily the system that I would prefer myself, but that's why I run in elections. But <laughs> it, it, it's good to see. Did you have any final questions for us, Ghost? Well, I know that Dolly's practically out of time himself, and it's been pretty late. So, I mean, I've got plenty of other questions I could ask, but I want to, you know, comment everybody here. Do you have anything yourself uh, to add on uh, personal leadership philosophy based on what I said? Oh, like my personal leadership philosophy? Yeah, why not? Okay. Well, my whole thing about designing plans for the government and for executing them was always everything was team-based. I wanted there to be lines connecting all of the different ministries together, all of our jobs kind of worked with each other. And my, my style is very much of, a, of delegation. I, I don't really like to be, you know, calling all the shots on every single thing. I like to be able to rely on the different ministers to run their section of the government. And like you said, have independence doing so. But at the end of the day, I do expect that we all share one vision for how it works because we're all a team. So everything that's done, even how uniquely each minister likes to run their, their part of the show, ultimately the big picture has to be the picture that I have in mind for it, the one that I laid out in my campaign, the one that I was elected on, and the one that I pledged when we started that this is what we're going to go for. So, you know, the delegate is a powerful position, and the buck does stop there, but you have to be able to let go a little bit and have that that teamwork rely on your team so to the extent that i'm involved or i'm calling shots it's always with the aim of working towards that big picture and helping the people helping me get where they need to go so never losing sight of the fact that we are in this together that we're working together on whatever it is i suppose i'll take a bite at the question too of personal leader personal leadership style on whatever it is. I suppose I'll... Take a bite at the question too, of personal, leader, personal leadership style. Over the years, I think I've come to the opinion that there's not so much a perfect leadership style as you need to tailor what you're doing as leader to what the circumstances require. So I think in 2008, I, I needed to kind of push certain things. I think in 2012, I needed to kind of encourage people to put their foot in the water and get involved. And one of the ways I tried to do that was to have elections for the executive council. And I think that that had some effect there. And I think that today we don't want to be doing that right now the way I was doing it then. and. That's fine. I think that basically seeing a want in the way the executive works and addressing it can be a very good way to contribute to the region as delegate today. Another thing I'd like to add is sort of a general reminder to uh, future delegates that as delegate, you do serve 
all nations in the region. And so mm -hmm. it's important to hear what they have to say and do your best to incorporate their vision into your goals for the region. And don't lose sight of that over the course of your term. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. Even if you are authoritarian, um, you still have to listen to your Addressing it can be a very good way to contribute to the region as delegate today. Another thing I'd like to add. today. Another thing I'd like to add is sort of a general reminder to uh, future delegates that as delegate, you do serve all nations in the region. And so mm -hmm. it's important to hear what they have to say and do your best to incorporate their vision into your goals for the region. And don't lose sight of that over the course of your term. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. Even if you are authoritarian, um, you still have to listen to your citizen, regardless of what kind of style of government that you have. You ultimately are elected by your WA. You have to think about what you're doing. You have to certainly take a step back and think about, am I doing the right thing? I, I agree that you have to listen to your citizen. Yeah, I think that I would agree with that. Absolutely. So I actually just thought of one last question. So I actually just thought of one last question, since it's relevant to some of us here anyway. It's kind of common in TMP that everyone's got kind of like an animal that represents them. So I was curious, Dolly, what's your animal? I am an animal, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't really have one. Besides, you know, back at the IRC days when I was being you know, a noob and all that, I'm like, Oh, I'm a vampire! Hoo! I'm, I'm a freaking vampire! Oh, I'm so edgy! Hoo hoo hoo! Uh, these days, um, I wield my rainbow band hammer in, in regions that I serve in, and I'm not a furry. <laughs> well... Neither are the other people who have animals as like they're. It's you more sure like party, about that? It's you like sure? how a political party has has an animal mascot. It's like uh -huh. that. it's not. It's not. Like Whatever a makes you feel any better. Well, I don't have one either. Just well, you, the ghost. you are a spirit a mine, of yeah. which that lurks and haunts us all. I mean, it's in the name, so like that's mine's easy, but it's not really an animal. Fiji, I assume yours is a dog. Uh, you'd be correct in that assumption. I thought that Fiji was an island, but clearly I need to drink more in order to realize that Fiji is actually a dog. <laughs> You're not the first person to have thought that. Others <laughs> in my past have seen a black eye in a green ocean. I like that I can see that. But if you zoom in or you look at my actual, like, you'll find that it is a very, very black, long-haired German Shepherd. I don't really so much consider myself an animal, but I have, for the longest time on Nation States, been associated with a dog, simply because of the flag that I have. I'll repeat it for, for the audience, uh, but I, I, as I've said so many times before, the flag that I have today is a celebration and memorial of a dog that I had from 2000 to 2013, uh, who was like my child best friend. And so I, I think that it's worth commemorating and a flag is a good way to, you know, remember him every day. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice. And Elu, you're a turtle, right? That's... Yeah. Well, It'd be really I weird also if you actually were. adopted an avatar 
of a turtle candle for a kind of memorial like thing and then just kept it because I like people to have consistent symbols for them. So I wanted to be consistent. Well, and this is why I've kept this avatar on years, a faceless man with rain. So that way, people know who I am, if I. And I guess Silly String was a can of Silly String. So another one that the name kind of tells you. <laughs> yeah, you can tell I'm running out of questions here, although part of that's just because it's getting kind of late. And uh, I look forward to your full responses and all your questionnaires, because by the time this gets published, we will have those hopefully ready to go as well. By the 9th, not yes. tonight. The 9th, not tonight. And uh, just as a reminder to everyone, even if it is too late, vote Jody and Cal. <laughs> hey, maybe, maybe, maybe they'll vote for you next year if they remember. Uh, are, you, are you trying to campaign for, like, a write-in ballot? You know what? I gotta do what I gotta do for whatever. <laughs> yeah, well, somebody's going to be the king. Uh, by the time this gets published, and I look forward to seeing who it is. Well, it ain't gonna be me, because guess what? Current delegates can't. What? That is BS. That is pure I'm pretty sure BS. that's the, It's, it's, it's the trying case. to prevent bias and, you know, oh, favoring the current This is what is wrong with TNP, when your delegate can't even be... I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to wait until next year. You have to coup. I think you have to coup now. Sick transit Gloria Mundi, darling. Sick transit Gloria Mundi. Well, I appreciated the history lesson and uh, the insight into those uh, other delegates that I only know by name because I'm too new. It was uh, hopefully useful for everyone listening. And really glad that we could all get together and have this little chat and kind of enjoy, uh, you know our collective experience in the office and share those experiences with everyone else. So hopefully, you know, we'll do something like this again uh, next year or, you know, have other events we can get together. And uh, thank you all for coming. And, and everyone who's listening to this, thank you for listening to the pretty long show that we are going to end up having. And uh, see you next time on NBS. Thank you so much for hosting, Ghost. Yeah, thanks. Yes.